So no, everything is happening around the world is to do with technology now. And I never thought that there is a technology called electrosmog. Did you ever heard that? Okay, what is electrosmog? I said fog is there, smog is there, but this is a new one. Okay, let me give you some data that Ajay gave, uh, Mr. Ajay Podar gave us. In 2001, one out of one lakh people were getting impacted because of the electro smog. And what, what they call is an electro, electro hypersensitivity. In 2015, one out of 1,000 people are getting impacted because of this. Right? And let me give you some other data. As far as cancer is concerned, which you consider the most, most of the disease which scares us all, is only 500 out of 1 people are getting impacted with cancer. So a more number of people getting impacted in this country, in this world, with electro hypersensitivity. And what is the impact on health? For that, we have a very interesting uh, work that uh, Ajay Kodar and his team is doing over there. But let me just ask you a couple of other questions. How many of us we understand geopathic stress? What is geopathic stress? Right? How many of us we understand the impact of server, computers, the cordless phone that we have in the room, and we are sleeping with that. And then we take a pride saying our house is Wi-Fi. So when the guest comes in these days, we don't offer water, right? The first you say, here's a charger, here's a Wi-Fi one. <laughs> right? If you don't give that, then you're considered as obsolete. You're, you're not up to the mark in life, okay? Let me also explain this to you, which, which really moved me, and Dr. Ashutosh should correct me if I'm wrong. All these things leads to high pulse rate. A reduction of 4% in the pulse rate can improve the health and your life by 8 years on an average. A 4% reduction in the pulse rate. Which means a 4% increase in your pulse rate can reduce your life by 8 years. Okay, So if you are interested to live a healthy life and a long life, then you must listen to this session for the next three speakers with your body, mind and heart in the room. Okay, that's the way I like to put it across. And uh, can we have a slide for, uh, I think we have a slide of introduction, Ajay, uh, to introduce uh, uh, Ajay Podar and his team over here with us. But let me just, uh, let me just share with you that uh, Ajay and his team specializes in correcting the negative geopathic radiation and man-made radiation. They have also, okay, so that's fine. Uh, they have also developed a chip which will demonstrate today to you that how a small chip can really neutralize the harmful aspects of all the electromagnetic radiation and prevents biological damage. He has spoken in 50 con 15 countries across the world and not only that he speaks on the technology but he basically brings technology, well-being and health together and the impact of everything around it. He's also an author of a book, and I will talk to you. I was very amazed, by the way, when I started interacting with him. He's authored a book called Empower Yourself, New Life Solution for Health and Well-Being. The only book Penguins have ever published on health and well-being, till today. All right? He's a columnist. He writes uh, regular columns in, uh, in Economic Times, Financial Times, Telegraph. And he's also co-authored many research papers in MIT Technology uh, Review, Journal of Biomedical Science and Engineering in U.S., and landmark research journal. He's an IIT Delhi graduate. A uh, couple of other things, he's a Ranji player. So he's a cricketer, played up to Ranji level. He's a junior national level table tennis player. Okay, He's done theater for 12 years. He's produced and directed a movie called Adhar Shila, which won a national award. Okay, He's a polo player. Uh, what else I think you do, and then you do all, and then you're a Reiki master, and a Reiki grandmaster. He, you, if you like to learn Reiki, he's happy to uh, teach us some techniques on that side. But amazing, and you know, one other thing which really left me very curious after meeting him. By the way, he lives on the same uh, um, same block that I live in, but never had a chance to interact so closely. But you know, one other thing I was saying: people keep complaining. You don't have time to follow a passion in life. Where do you find time? How do you get this time in life? Ajay, that will be a very interesting conversation some other day. But ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome one and all Ajay Hazardar. Rajinder has said so much that there is nothing to say. But don't believe him, half of it is not true. <laughs> <laughs> so 
thank you very much. Uh, it's a delight and a honor for me to interact with all of you today. So, uh, there are many things which some of the things you would not have heard of or you would not know. We are in primarily in the field of trying to find out technology is moving at a very fast pace. And we use technology because it is economical or it is environmentally friendly or it gives, or it gives us more comfort or it's useful. But seldom we uh, examine the health effects of technology. I'll give you two very recent examples. We all started using CFL. And five years later, we were told that CFL is not healthy because it emits a lot of mercury vapor. Now, everybody knew that it would emit mercury vapor. Two years on, you are going to hear about the same about LED. Because we are going to be told that it emits too much of sodium vapor, which is not good for our body. So, it's like using seat belts in cars. 20 years back, we didn't use seat belts in cars. Now, most people who consider themselves educated and aware would do that. But we need to have seat belts on technology. So that's the kind of preamble I wanted to give you. So we have to change it in this. So uh, geo, there are two kinds of things which we are apart from the esoteric stuff and the healing and all that. That's not something which is easily replicable. That's more of an individual based thing. This, the, the dream was that how do we impact the lives of maximum number of people? So we've impacted the lives of about 25 lakh people so far with our work. And with the help of some of the ambassadors sitting here and many other people, I like to acknowledge and I'm delighted that Pramanji is here. So you saw that his book also is featured in Tony's library. And of course, Tony is, we go back some time, he's delighted with the work that he's doing for the community. So he's also a kind of a mentor and he believes also in our work, which is great for us. So we have geopathic stress, which is coming from the ground. Geo means earth and pathic means what causes pathos or sadness or stress. And uh, the what happens is that any natural radiation is random in nature. This sketch is not very good, but if you want to get an idea of what we mean by random, if you see an ECG or an EEG, so the waveform you have is not systemic, it's not a sine wave. In Hindi films they show that once a guy is dead, then it becomes like a sine wave and then it goes flat. But the so our language which the body understands is random because all information through our cellular system is transmitted through random waves whereas the wi-fi radiation or emr what we call as electromagnetic radiation are all sine waves so systemic waves so it's just like two people who are speaking to one another so if i speak to you in english and somebody speaks louder in arab we won't be able to carry on a normal conversation we'll have to shout which means it will create stress. So anything which is not uh, akin to our body, is not natural to our body, creates stress. So geopathic stress is where the earth, earth's energies or the earth frequency is distorted. And because we are connected to the earth with the gravitational force, uh, when we are standing in a distorted energy field, or our body also gets stressed. So this is, these are the two things which I'm going to speak about. And you're welcome to ask any questions in between if something comes to you. Uh, it's okay, it's more of a conversation. So to, uh, the geopathic stress is, these are certain grids which are formed in the earth. Some grids are 5 meters apart, some are 10 to 12 meters apart, some are 15 to 18. They run primarily north, south, east, west. 
and but they're not like latitude and longitude because they vary with the topography of the land so you actually have to measure it we have started working on a project where we can put it on google map so you can actually know maybe two years down the line or something whether your house or whether your bed or something is affected with geopathic stress and maybe then you can do something about it then there are cavities in mineral deposits you might have heard that people who live in mining areas they get affected a little faster because these are unnatural deposits and when the earth's energy is flowing there is a different kind of a density and it, the energy has to flow around it and the frequency gets disturbed and then there are cavities under the earth so there are water streams underground water streams or air cavities so that also so these are what comes in the realm of geopathic stress and this is what we call about as electro smog so why is it bad is it's it's unseen if air quality is bad you can see the smog you can see the dirty air you can smell it you can breathe it water if there's dirty water you put a water filter you uh, you'll get the dirt sense so how many of you i want to ask you have read a cell phone manual we all <laughs> use cell phones right <laughs> nobody nobody wow so it says four things so a lot of people ask me you know we've been using a cell phone for 15 years 20 years nothing's happened to us is it really bad the government says the telecom industry says there's nothing wrong so i just tell them just read the cell phone go to your uh, safety what are the things rf exposure and safety within setting within setting there is a topic called safety within safety there's a topic called rf radiation if you go then these four points are so well so i'll so, uh, uh, so my I'd like to introduce my colleagues my the co-founder of this company manisha atanelia mm -hmm. and kaloshri who's designed <coughs> this presentation and priti we also worked together so uh, four things one is recommended talk time per hour <coughs> guess how much i mean Six minutes. Six. You're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so, text more than you talk, which is obvious. Always use hands-free, and keep the device ten millimeters from your body any at any given time. Hand, <laughs> hand is also body. <laughs> so now tell me how many people follow all these four things in this room. So, you do. Oh, wow. No, not because I know about all this, but because but I am in any case a kind of person who wants to avoid the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so you, are, you should be getting a Nobel Prize no, because there will be very few. So the rest of us are at risk if we have to believe the cell phone companies because that's what they ask us to do. So this is what are some of the effects are these which you know. One of the things is that and there are a lot of healers here and everything and if you ask people what is the number of one problem it is sleep 50% of people don't get good sleep and a lot of it has to do with watching television just before you sleep using your watching movies on laptops and a whole lot of things that go around and of course geo geopathic stress is not known so this is a typical this is one of an offices belonging to a large corporate entity so these red lines and the blue lines you see this blue zone is are the geopathic stress line and this one is coming from a high tension wire line nearby so this is the actual amount of area that is affected then there's a server room and these are all the individual devices, all the laptops and the desktops. So we are not even talking about the mobile phones yet. So there's another thing which is coming from a mobile tower on top, but I think that is not being seen. 
And this is the Wi-Fi in any home. So you would have a Wi-Fi TV, you would have a Wi-Fi router, you would have a Wi-Fi AC. Everything works on Wi-Fi. And when you switch it off, so even if it is not working, <coughs> that your main device and the Wi-Fi, they're talking to one another and saying, I'm here, hey, I'm here. Yeah. So whether it's a mobile tower, whether it's anything like that, it's something, it's a constant conversation that goes on. So the statistic is that 20% of the Earth's surface is affected by geopathic stress, various geopathic stresses, which means 20% of people's health is affected without knowing. So you may have cancer, you may have blood pressure, you may have whatever it is, and you are going to a hospital, you are going to a doctor, and the doctor will give you the prescription historically, whatever he thinks is the treatment for it, whether it's chemotherapy or whether it is a, a pill for blood pressure, but the cause is not known. <coughs> and we all know, at least from the ancient Indian systems of healing, that actually you have to heal the cause. So if you don't know the cause of the disease, you can't actually heal it. And everybody suffers to various extents from electro smog. Rajinder mentioned to you this electro hypersensitivity. So most doctors also don't know about this disease. So they will treat it as a neurological disorder or the onset of Parkinson. If their hands start shaking or there is a sudden rash, then you would be given other skin medicines or whatever. So this is the dimension that we are trying to address. These are some of the effects. This is how you might know. In the offices, what we see is that people who are sitting on geopathic zones leave the organization. The attrition from those seats is much higher than from the other places. So in organizations where we've done work, we've mapped it, where we've seen, we've told them that these are the places, and we've asked them these questions, that are the people sitting on these seats, if they've been sitting here for three, four years, how's their performance, how's their health? And we found almost an 80% correlation between the health of the people sitting on these zones or sitting near a server room or their attrition rates and stuff like that. So even machines, because machines are all on foundations and they are completely governed by the earth, their vibratory frequency also gets disturbed if the earth's vibratory frequency is disturbed. And our work in refineries, steel plants, a lot of industries, we found, we've taken the breakdown six months before our work. We actually correct some of this stuff. And six months later, and we found that once the geopathic stresses have been corrected, there the machine breakdowns also. So it impacts people and machines. Now, how did people earlier know where the geopathic stresses were. We, we are not, there's not very well documented what kind of instruments they use. But one of the things which we know is that they would let sheep and cattle graze the ground in Germany, in medieval Germany. Even now in our villages, if somebody says, Ke, where do we build a house? Do we know whether the land is good? So people say, Ke, so animals and children are very intuitive to these stresses. And so what they used to do is that the cows or the animals would not eat the grass wherever there were geopathic stresses. And the whole township would get mapped out. So they would know where to avoid the living areas and where to build. Trees and plants also, as you see in the next picture, now there are four or five trees, but one tree is affected. That is because it is growing on a geopathic stress line. So you'll find it either it's bent or it's stunted or it would, is diseased. So it affects plants, it affects animals, it affects everything. Food. So this is the years, this is the research over the years on geopathic stress. The modern research started in the 40s. Of course, we've seen a lot of temples and churches and we found that they all follow these principles. So uh, the Ernst Hartmann, who actually said that cancer is a disease of location, he looked at 500 cases of cancer. 
and he went to their homes and their workplaces and he found that four up 490 of them were were on a geopathic zone for more than four to five years so he concluded that it's not necessarily a genetic disease and of course children's problems and things like that now because of wi-fi and all this you will now you know that autism and all the children's diseases are much more they've increased alarmingly you know the attention deficit and all that so this is the research and uh, some of the work post the work this has been the thing we beat the been machine reductions we've got about 8000 data points on pulse rate and of course we've done this and experiment with the max hospital also so where we have been told that pulse is an immediate indicator of stress so we've taken a large enough statistical size and we did what is called a double blind crossover test to take care of the placebo effect so we took the pulse rate of 200 doctors and employees at max sakhet and for 3 days and of course the data was recorded by the doctors themselves not us and then we put a dummy chip on their devices on the phone and then there were the pulse rate was taken for 7 days so again it was the pulse rate were more or less the same. Then the dummy chip was substituted by an actual chip, which neither the tester nor the tested knew, which was actual in dummy. That was double blind. And there was a 4.8% reduction average on 200 people. So this is the dimension of the problem that if you are constantly stressed, not because you are shouting or because you are running, but because of the environment or because of the devices you are using, that's the issue. So now also the Green Building, Indian Green Building Council has uh, formulated well standards, thanks to Kamal Ji and Dr. Prem Jain, who is no more, and where this has been also included as part of this. So you get some points if the Wi-Fi and the geopathic stress radiations are corrected. This is what WHO has identified it as possibly carcinogenic in 2011, category 2B, which was the same category where they put cigarettes in in 1996. So we are, <coughs> in that cycle, we are all, uh, just about 15 years behind. <coughs> yeah, this I've already spoken to. I want to show you a, <coughs> I want to request Manisha to come. Anyone, if you can volunteer, I want to show you what is the effect of the mobile on your body. So whoever thinks he or she is pretty strong, please come. No, that's okay. You can figure it out. So what I'm showing is simple way how you know mobile is impacting you. A simple hand strength test, which is part of a science called kinesiology, which some of you would know. And uh, so, you don't have any shoulder issue. You can put your hand like this. Why do you face the audience so that they will see? Yeah. So, I'm going to push your hand down. Don't allow me to push. Resist off. Okay, very good. Wow, oh, you're strong. So, this is the strength. Now, I just want her to hold this phone in front of her. This is working. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Ready? Phone is good. Ready? Do you resist? Well, I didn't know I was supposed to. Okay, try again. Try again. Okay. Same strength. Ready? Yeah. Now, can you put it on flight mode? Same phone on flight mode. So what I'm doing is removing the radiation. The gadget is still there. put it on airplane. Airplane. Okay. Now, no signal, but the gadget is same. Can we try the same test yeah, again? Yes, okay. because then you know that it's not the gadget which is doing the job. Ready? I can't push more. <laughs> this is just showing you how mobiles are impacted. You can try this test at home, and if you still have some strength, then I want to show how Mr. Podar's mobile impacted.
Come on, you, you have to check on your phone. Okay. Yeah. So can I do this with this mobile? It's working. I hope so. So much bigger, so I'm sure the stress is higher. Okay. So let's see. Okay, same strength. What you used? So still I can't push it. So it's a bigger mobile. Yeah. So this is actually has a chip which can protect you from the harmful impact of the radiation. So yes, we all have to use the mobile, but we can have things by which we can protect ourselves. And this is where our work is also. What chip is it? It's called Envirochip. We'll talk about it. So externally added. Externally added. So this is just wanted to show you the impact of a gadget which we don't know. So this is just by holding the phone. Talking is another story. <laughs> so this was, I just talked to you about this test. So 200 was done at max, 300 was done in a BPO called Steria. It's a French BPO, which has a very large office in uh, Noida. Same thing. And then some of the other certifications. So basically one concern was that if we put it on the mobile, uh, will our warranty hold with the phone companies because will it impact the signal strength and quality? So there's no change in signal strength and quality. MIT examined the technology, and of course we have publications in a couple of papers. It's one of the first products certified by the Singapore Green Building Council. This is, just to give you a sense, this is one of the kind of ads which we used to have for cigarettes 30 years back, where doctors used to say that, you know, camel is good for the throat. <laughs> And these are the two visuals which we like to show. So would you like to give your child a cigarette? Everybody is quite horrified, but everybody happily gives their child a mobile to play with. The effect is the same. So these are some of our, this is the chip, one of the chips which we use for the ground <coughs> correction, the geopathic stress correction, this is the Enviro chip. And this is another product which I don't have to show you, but it's not yet in the market. This is an Enviro globe because one of the concerns of people was that we put the chip on our thing, but what do we do for the tower which is which my neighbor has put? Now the neighbor is getting revenue out of it, so the neighbor is not going to remove it, but it's affecting me. And the whole lot of electro smog that we talk about. So this one takes care of about 300 square feet. Again, it randomizes the waveform. So the technology on which the chip and this works is that we randomize the waveform so that the wave that is coming to you through the Wi-Fi or the electro smog becomes randomized, which is friendly to your body and doesn't interfere with your communication system and therefore cause stress. So this is the technology. We say that there's no point in trying to absorb or deflect the radiation because you're spending millions of dollars to radiate that signal. So you need the signal. And we make it non-bio-effective so that it's biological. We use it in a manner where we don't change anything in a space, place of work. And uh, the strength of the signal is not this thing. This is some of the data which has, I think has been shared earlier. So this is the health and well-being piece that as per Harvard, any one dollar spent on health and wellness initiates savings of almost three dollars to the organization. So it's not only something which you just do because you have goodness in your heart, but it also yields more profits. And these are some of the, there are many testimonials, but they're just two. <coughs> this is the body of work we've already done so far. Some of the organizations. This is what Churchill said, he nothing, knew, apparently he knew nothing about buildings. Thank you. I hope I've on time. So yeah. yeah. So
it's kind of difficult for us to understand how a piece of metal uh, or something like that, without electricity or without anything, can change the waveform. Yeah, so can you help us understand that a little bit? Yeah, so what happens is that uh, in the case of the Enviro chip that we use on the phone, it has certain natural materials which radiate in terahertz. Uh -huh. That is the natural frequency. Natural vibratory frequency. Natural vibratory frequency. Because everything vibrates. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. our, the microwave radiation or the EMRs that are radiated are in the megahertz. Right. So this becomes the carrier wave. Okay. So it's like a stronger wave in the sea carrying a weaker wave. Water doesn't get destroyed. Okay. But you see, all the water you see is in the strong the, the wave which will be stronger or more frequent. That is what you'll see. So what happens is that this carrier wave which is generated by this, when it's correctly positioned, so it's not that you can fix it anywhere on the phone. There is a place specified where you have to fix it on the laptop, on the phone, on the server, wherever. So that carries the microwave radiation in a randomized form, which is which doesn't interfere with the body communication. So that's the technology as far as the <coughs> man-made radiation is concerned. That's the principle, which is what MIT has also examined and written in their magazine, the technology review. As far as the ground radiations are concerned, the ground radiations, as children, have some of us played with springs, wound springs. So, so what do you do when you find a hard wound spring? And as children, you know, we just tweak it. And it's so, it seems to be well, very well, but suddenly the spring starts doing the other way. So basically, as far as the ground thing is concerned, we feed a program into that, which is all about what, when, when you say what is an Intel chip. So if you dissect an Intel chip, you won't find any material in it. So all the program which it holds megabytes of information and transmits is all actually embedded into it by light waves. Silicon is the material in it, but basically there is nothing there. So basically, we program it so that wherever the Earth's vibration is disturbed, that frequency, when it flows through that material, which is a copper and aluminum mix, is, is just frequency is corrected. And it's easiest to correct it when it changes its medium. So if I put it on a surface, so at that point, that radiation is coming from the Earth to air. That's where we change it. That's broadly the technology. <coughs> yeah, please. I'll give the mic here. Please. No, no, I've asked I've loud enough to well. So uh, what we saw and what we heard looks like quite an easy solution for the, you know, the danger we are living in. So why the mobile companies are not incorporating this technology into their mobile? Why did the cigarette companies not say that it's injurious to health? No, but still, it's, it looks like a very easy. No, it's uh, that's what we when we invented it about ten years back. Two of my friends from IIT, my batchmates, my classmates were CEO of uh, cell phone companies and tower companies. So the first thing I went to do is I went to them. So they said, Ajay, we know all about it, but the moment we talk about radiation or doing anything about it, anybody who's got cancer for the last fifteen years will litigate against us and say, why didn't you do it before? We are international companies. We can't afford the cost of litigation. So rightfully or wrongfully, they say, and they say, customer doesn't know. Customer is not demanding that we do anything about it. When there is enough of a ground swell from the customer, where they say, what are you doing about it? And please do something. Or the governments tell us to do something. Governments, the government of India, for example, gets 3 lakh crores as spectrum fees every year from the telecom companies. Do you think that they are going to tell the telecom companies what to do? It's the other way around. Another question. Um, just to clarify. Uh, 
uh, just to clarify that the uh, the machine that you mentioned, which would protect around 3,000 square feet, no, no, 300, 300, 300 square feet. It's not a machine. It's just a device. It's got certain mix of crystals which do the same job. <coughs> so it's not an electrically powered machine. It gets uh, charged with sunlight <coughs> or an electric lamp. So it's a very natural thing. So it will uh, neutralize. The electronic gadgets and also the no, it will not neutralize the electronic gadgets will still work. Uh, it will no. just change their waveform wave so that they are not harmful for you. And also create a shaman wave. Sorry? Also create the, the shaman wave or the ground frequency, the natural No, no, frequency. this is not dealing with the ground frequency. Okay, this so is only for the electro smog or the Wi Fi device. Geopathic stress stage. Geopathic stress is that you saw another square chip there. Yeah. So those are the chips which we fix on the ground. We, there's a, he's talking about the lecker antenna. So we also use the lecker antenna. We fix a certain frequency on it. So there are about 10 types of geopathic stress that we uh, measure. And they have different wavelengths and frequencies. So we put that on that and then we check. So we know where it is. And then once we put the corrective, then we check again whether the nature of the energy has changed or not. So if we suspect in a patient that um, there is geopathic stress, um, if many of, sometimes we suspect in the form that you know many of the family members are ill, and uh, you know we are trying all treatments and they're not working, and that was a, those are the cases where we suspect it. So it has to be a device like that to uh, manage the. Yeah, no, no, it's not a device. We put a chip on the ground. So our people come for survey. You can get it surveyed. Geopathic stresses have certain wavelengths. So you can check on that. So if your living area, let's say your bed or something is affected by that, then you need to do something about it. If it is somewhere where you spend half an hour in a day, it doesn't matter. Your body is strong enough to take care of this. Come on, you want to pass. Yeah. Well, I'd like to tell you a little story about my experience with his company and him. This was about 11 years ago. We were doing the world's most energy efficient building called Green Spaces. And we got support directly from President Bush's office. And as a result of which, they agreed to give us $125 million to build it, etc. But, and we became the flagship project for the Asia Pacific Partnership. But there was one condition and that any technology which we used in this building would be approved by one of the national labs in the US. One of them was Lawrence Murphy National Lab. I took up this idea of doing this kind of study on the building uh, with them. And they said, forget it. What is all this? You don't understand this. And then I remember, I said, OK, let's do a demo for you. And a senior scientist from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab was there. And I remember Manisha was there. And she came with a sort of a stick, <coughs> which would bend stick. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> where these lines were crossing. So the person said, oh, sure, I can also bend this. No problem. You give it to me. So he himself, the senior scientist took it. And the stick was also bending at that particular point. So he said, at the end of it, there is something to it. We're not going to throw it out. We're going to take it forward. The project never happened, so we never did it. But in any case, in the Barbu Business Center, we got the study done and made all the corrections which we needed. So that's the story. The great advocate of Barbu. Thank you. I would like to also acknowledge Ambassador Rajan. I just happened to see him. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, Mr. Podar, it's really interesting that you spoke about it. I've been exposed to this technology sometimes back in Ukraine. There's a lot of research happening here. And you also showed the cow there. They also get, got this experiment done, sending the cow to its, uh, you know, the milking shed. And then they leave the cows for uh, grazing. And then they put up a satellite, you know, the TV tower. Then they sent the cow again. Before that, they had already taken a blood report, and then they tested it. And the cows refused to go into that after a day or two. First day, they did go innocently. And after two days, they didn't go. And then they found out why. 
the legs take the blood test. Then they saw the structure of the blood of the cows have changed. So for me, being in this field for a long time is, we are using it so innocently, ignorantly, these gadgets. What about our bloods? It may also have changed the structure, but we haven't yet read. So I'm very, very thrilled and happy that you're doing something because I don't have the bandwidth to go to the government and speak about it. A simple gadget the Ukraine has made, just like the one you showed the round globe, you can just keep it under the TV towers or the mobile towers, and that can save a lot for our country, you know. So you all are there experts. You can take it forward. He's a great researcher. He's going all over the countries to speaking about it. Thank you for bringing this. I'd just up. like to share a movie. I don't know any of you have seen this movie called Robot <coughs> 2.0. It has Rajini Kaat and Akshay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone seen it? Yeah, I see. Gotcha. So they talk about it, and they talk about it in a very interesting dimension, which we have not spoken, but I thought I'll just take a minute, if I may, to tell you that Akshay Kumar is an ornithologist there. He has a full bird sanctuary. And suddenly somebody puts a mobile tower in the nearby field, and he finds that the birds are the people, birds with food, migrate, they don't come, they die, some others are dying. So he explains that for every one human being, there are 100 birds on this planet. So the total mass of birds is more than human beings. The total food consumed by them is more than human beings. They consume insects. Their food is insects. So the bird population in the last 10 years has reduced by 20% because of, largely because of Wi-Fi. And that means the insect population is increased by 20%. And they are, in turn, eating crops and plants, which is causing farmer distress. So this, if you look at it, it has a larger implication on the entire food cycle and our, uh, the whole balance. Just wanted to mention. Yes, sir. Is there, is there a, a, a universal guideline uh, which specifies the, you know, the acceptable safety levels of uh, EMF uh, in a particular area. I had read somewhere that if it's below 100, then it's kind of safe. Is, is that true? See, there are, there are fine prints there. So it's a very long subject, but whatever are the government uh, specified things, it is for an EMF transmission by one watt from a mobile tower. But the equipment that our mobile tower manufacturers are using, the normal, they're using something like 20 to 30 watts. Which means that even if you measure the EMF level, that is what you are measuring is on the what all the machines, all the instruments are collaborate for a one watt reading. But it's actually 20 times more. Okay. For example, it's 30 in this area as of now. So 30 is what the instrument is telling you. Instrument is calibrated in a particular way which is as per the standards. And uh, anyway, our standards are about, like let's say if you take, go to Italy or Switzerland, what is permissible there, what is permissible here is about 100 times more. So the human being is the same. A Swiss guy is not stronger or more immune 100 times as compared to an Indian. So, you know, it's a very large, it's very complex. You have a question there? Yeah. yeah. Can I yeah. ask two questions? Because uh, there are, uh, I've always wondered there, the, you know, there are a lot of houses, sometimes you, you go to Bangkok or you come in, you see a lot of a big chunks of wires going to somebody's house, right? Yeah. yeah. They're really a lot, like yeah. a lot. Yeah. And does it, number one, have any effect if you are just, the house is along there, the shop is along there? Number one. And number two, in, in tall buildings, there are like, um, cell phone antenna. Boosters also. Boosters, all that. Yeah. Now, how bad is that? And will this um, sort of help uh, neutralize some? See, of if you are, uh, let's say, a router. So let's start with the simplest thing, a router. So you start with a cell phone. So a cell phone, if it is about one and a half feet away from you, is okay. You are not affected by it. If you take a router, if you are about six feet away from it, you are okay. So if it's not in your bedroom, if it's in your drawing room or somewhere else, you're okay. If it's a booster, it may be about 15 feet. 
If it's a tower, it may be 30 meters. Mm -hmm. So it is big, just the intensity and how far you are. So for a, for a tower, the ones that are staying higher mm -hmm. up will get more affected, right? No, it depends on where the tower antenna is. The, you got these radiators there. Yeah, yeah those structures. So, right so if, you, it, if you are facing that, mm -hmm. so suppose if the tower is on a six-story building, and you are staying on the 8th story in a Across. building which is facing. Yeah. So anywhere between the 5th story and the 8th story might get effect. Right, right. And those wires, because wires I, I get... Uh, yeah, sensitive. wires are nearby then of course it is affecting because it's also causing what is called electrostatic. <coughs> so one of the, the bigger one for the area of 300 square feet will, will solve that area where you are. Yeah, so if you, are in, if you have it in your room, then it's protecting you. Mm. It's protecting you, the, that room, from whatever else is so there. So can you, around. if you walk around with it, so you're 300 square yeah, feet yeah. safe. <laughs> <laughs> so we provide a pouch with it. So when you go to a hotel room and things like that, so you can carry it. Because in a hotel room, the router is always on. And you can't switch it off. Can you, you can hang it around your neck? Huh? <laughs> this is too heavy. We've we'll come with something else which is okay, easier. Can you talk a little bit about the, the mobile phone using on the movements, you know, the blood? Uh, yeah, blood-brain barrier is much thinner, so it affects them. There are studies, actually, if you can Google Dr. Deborah Davis, yeah. she's done a lot of work on this. And we have one last question for you. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask you about the halogen and these lights. I've heard that they're very bad for us, as, as bad as Wi-Fi. And also, I wanted to ask you about earthing. I've heard that earthing is a very good way to also release these. About the lights, maybe yeah, thank you. Dr. Mithil can, can tell you more about okay. it. But you agree that the uh, because lights... Uh, uh, no, nah, many of these, because they are, they are using certain sources which are prolonged exposure to these things, can have effects, but I don't think enough study has been done. And that's our area of study. So we're also now looking at solar energy yeah. or electric cars, which everybody feels is safe. But, but there are side effects to that. Yeah. And we are now starting research with some people in Amsterdam and all to try and mitigate <coughs> these effects and try to make it safe for people, because they're going to be all over the place. Elon Musk has invented a solar roof solar building materials. So the piezoelectric cells are now going to be embedded in your roof tiles and in your bricks. So you're going to have, you're going to live in an electromagnetic cage. That's the future. And about earthing? Smart homes. Yeah. So you have, you can earth, but in order to earth also something is going from somewhere to somewhere. So. If you are surrounded by it all the time, it's just the ability of your body, how much can it deal with it. But if you go for a walk barefoot in the garden, like, then you're discharging quite yeah, a lot of that very, energy, that's right? Walking barefoot is very good, of course. So there's a lot of red flags being raised on 5G, mm -hmm. saying that's very harmful and very dis disruptive. Is that a view? That it should not no, be they, I mean, they, of course, because the transmission, the, the whole intensity of 5G, anything which works faster and which is doing more data, faster data exchange and using more intensity is more harmful. Mm -hmm. Because one, it has more heat, and secondly, it is uh, using much higher frequencies. So 5G, there was this, they tried it on, uh, in, in Amsterdam. Recently, they did a 5G experiment, one of the companies, right. and they found, and it's viral, it's all over uh, on oh, the news, good. that there were about 500 birds within a three kilometers radius. They found 500 birds dead within three hours of when the 5G thing was done. So 5G, there is right now a big debate. Even the governments and all are saying that they, it's the house is like divided whether we should introduce 5G at all or not, because the effects are much more obvious. Right. <coughs> Let's put a, give a round of applause to uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very, very much. One more time. Uh, I'm sure we are all very, uh, we have a heightened anxiety right now about devices and everything. Uh, 
anxiety will not help us we have to take action around it to start with small actions can be taken you can switch off your wi-fi go and check the wi-fi router where it is placed be six feet away from that uh, avoid mobile chargers uh, not the cordless phone charger next to your bed avoid cordless phone at home have a landline phone at home so there are a few things that you can do in life to start with it should not happen you know, I, in, 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 in the training i'm a trainer by 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 passion in training we say the rule of 72 rule of 72 simply means your money will multiply in seven years time at a rate of interest of eight percent mm -hmm. but in 72 hours if you don't take action this will become a knowledge and then you'll become a gyani to go and give gyan to everybody mm -hmm. right. so better we take action and we, we get on to action all together. So thank you very much, uh, Ajay. One thing I'm going to do today, promise, is I'm going to get the Wi-Fi out of my room, at least in the bedroom. Thank you.